Today we're going to look at the uh, Brio screen and the actual technique of re-threading. We're going to simulate a uh, thread break and go through the pointers of actually pulling the uh, screen out of its frame and re-threading it. First thing we'll do, we'll simulate a broken screen. You can take a uh, very sharp knife. Okay, the thread's been cut. As you can see, the thread becomes longer and longer as we go. From here we've got to look at um, removing the screen from the channel kit and to do that we need to actually get the thread kit. The thread kit comes with all the instructions and all the hardware needed to even re-thread our biggest screen which is 3200 high, 4500 mils wide. Our sample size screen here that we're looking at re-threading, it's a metre high, uh, sorry, it's 800 mils high and a metre wide. So if we flick over our instruction kit to find our table for all our rethread is we look at the screen height, 800 by 1100. So list the three or four cords that actually run through this screen. This one particular one's got one, two, three, and we've cut the fourth screen. If we have a look at our diagram, we can actually show which threads are one, two, three, and four. So the technique to um, actually removing the screen is the reverse of installing it for those of actually those installers that have installed screens before. So the first thing we do is we push the screen right back into the closed position, get some masking tape, and mask off the screen. On our small sample here we can wrap the tape all the way around. In reality you can only stick from either side of the jam. From here you then need to loosen up your collets, which is your threads, in your kit to actually get a thread kit. We use our Allen key, and if you have a look in closely you can see me undoing. Again we have the same system in the top as we do at the bottom, so we just loosen off our threads. We've loosened all the threads off. Mm -hmm. From now we need to actually undo the screws that hold our bottom channels in place. Once the screws are out, we start by removing the inner channel, which holds all our adjustments. And try and do this without twisting off your cables too much. lay them down flat in front of the screen. From here we then need to actually remove the screen from the housing and the easiest way to do this, first of all we're going to use a pair of plies or multi-grips. We get down right on a uh, bottom corner. At the moment you notice I've wrapped tape around my, uh, my plies that's to help stop scratching the screen. We grab a bottom corner nice and tight and using a pushing against the plier movement and a sudden pull back in one strong movement will actually get the screen to pop out of its receiver. Now that we've actually got the screen out, we've just laid it down on a nice flat surface. We've got to remove our handlebar. So to do that, we get rid of our bottom, our bottom guide, and the handlebar just slides off. This gives us access to all our bearings and all our um, mechanisms. So we'll just throw that to one side for the time being. We'll lay all our threads out into the correct location. We notice that we only have one thread at the bottom. And there's our broken thread. If we stretch it out a little bit, we can actually see that in the back of the screen is where it all starts. So we just cut the screen out, cut the mount out, and we show that we have a brass collar and a spring. What we need to do is get rid of our old thread, so we'll just pull that out of the uh, out of the way and throw that you know, bin off to one side. Keep these safe because there's nothing worse than losing your smaller parts. From here now, we need to measure out some thread. On this particular screen it was thread number four. Thread number four, looking at our instructions, is 1900. So we'll measure out 
1900 mils of thread. Right here. Now we've cut our thread to, uh, to length. We've got a couple of small things to prep. First thing is, is we just need to remove our rollers. Now they're only slid into place, so just a screwdriver and a quick shuffle. I like to use my Allen key to help get underneath. This is our roller that all our thread runs across. And our thread's actually got to run through this as well. So we, we remove it just to make it a lot easier to get the thread through. On the back side, we have a smaller guide. Again, we'll use our screwdriver. And, then, and again, that just pops out as well. From here, we go to our needle set. I like to use the longest needle that we have. It just makes it a lot easier for you to uh, get the thread through. And this is where your, uh, your grade eight sewing comes in at here. Now we start by threading the needle through the roller. Once that's through, we then go from the end where we've removed the roller. This is where we start. We so from here you actually see where the original thread started. And from there you just start slowly pushing it through until you can see your needle on the other side. We start by threading the needle through the existing holes, thus not making any other holes and creating an issue. From here, we just slowly pick up each pleat as we go. Now once we've got the needle through all the pleats, we slowly get the needle coming out the other side. If need be, grab your pliers and slowly just shimmy the... Now we've got the thread through, we need to actually go back in through the guide. So we start from the bottom side of the guide, through the hole. We then need to rebuild the other side. So we take our collar, we actually slide into the cutout of the collar. We grab our spring from earlier, thread that through the center, and then we get our brass collet, which we had off to one side as well. Once we've done that, we just need to do a finishing knot. More details are on the instructions of how to complete this knot. All we need to do now is reinsert the guide on our side, so just take up the, uh, the tension on the thread, sit it back into our hole, grab our screwdriver again, and just put a bit of tension until you feel it clicking into place. From there, you go back to our other side, and we reinstall our roller. Again, using our screwdriver, clips into place. Then with your thread, you run it down to the bottom end of the screen, following the direction of the roller, where we then find our bottom roller, which we slide out, and insert the other thread into place. We then put our new thread into place and replace our roller. And that just clips into place. At this point here, make sure that the roller hasn't actually clamped or crushed any of the uh, threads in between the housing and it runs in there freely. Once this is done, we then need to replace the roller to the bottom of the screen. To do this, we need to insert the skid block first, which goes back up into the same place that it came out of. We half slide it into place and then we slide our bearing in. Again, once we've got the roller in place, just ensure that the threads haven't caught and we slide our skid block down. Sliding everything all into place. Now that we've had our new threads installed, now we take up the slack on our thread, placing it back into place from when we first started. Taking up the tension to close all the screen back up into place. We then use some tape to hold that back into place and from there we then go back to the standard fitting up of the screen. It starts with wrapping some masking tape around the housing to keep everything 
together nice and square. Now that we've um, got our thread into place, we need to remove our old thread from our bottom channel guide. And the way we do this is we remove the end of our extrusion, place that to one side, and whichever of our threads is broken, which is this one here, we remove out of the housing and we cut the old thread off. We get the end of our new thread. We put it back through the guide. And then we join it back to our cleat. Again, using the same knot as we used on the other end. Once we've got our uh, cleat tied back on, whichever of our two threads is the longest, then slides back up into our channel, making sure that the Allen key is on the uh, upside so that we can adjust it. As you can notice, our Allen key is there. Both our guides go in. Insert at the end of our extrusion, making sure that the, the guides run nice and clean. And there's our thread replaced. From now, we just need to reinstall our screen. Now we're looking at uh, reinstalling our screen. Because we've got such a small screen, it's quite easy to handle. Some of the key things that we need to be aware of when we're refitting the screen is which is the top and which is the bottom of the screen. On this particular one, or on all our screens, there is always a thread approximately 50mm from the top of the screen. So looking at our screen here, we have our 50mm roller here, or our thread, because we can see the bearing and now where our thread goes. Looking at our bottom, we've got nothing until we're about 200mm up from the bottom. So on this screen, this is our top. Here's our frame. What we do now is we take up a little bit of tension on our threads, sit it into our frame, stand it up, slide it back so it gets nice and tight to the jam. At this stage, we check and make sure that none of the threads are being caught up anywhere or going to be bothered by our system. We then push the pressure on and one or two quick solid thumbs will push it back into its inner locker. Now we then need to replace our top and bottom channels. These effectively end up this way into the uh, channel so the thread runs over our guide. To get these into place there's actually a locator inside they go up, give them a quick twist at 90 degrees and slide the channel in. For your top, as part of the channel kit, we actually give you give you some clips. That's it, what are we going to do with that? This clip comes with a pack. It actually goes onto the top of this channel and only on the top to actually hold it into place while we fit this into the channel. So we make sure that the thread's running back over the guide to install this channel. So we put the channel in, stand it up and turn 90 degrees. From here now we reinstall our screws that hold our bottom channel in. Now once we've got our screws into place we can now tension our uh, screen back up. Just when tensioning up your threads you take them to the stop point and then you give them a little bit more. They don't need to be tensioned up like a guitar string just enough to sort of give a firm tension to it. What we need to check is to make sure our threads are actually running over this bearing, not either side. If they are not installed correctly, the thread can drop either side and then it becomes a friction point and the thread will burn out very, very quickly. Again, we also need to um, re-tension the strings at the top. It's the same process as below. Tension the strings up till they stop, give them a little bit more. And again, recheck that second bearing to make sure that the threads are running over the bearing. Now that you've got all your tension and everything's all set for your, uh, for your screen, just have another final check just to make sure all your threads are in the right place, they're running over all the bearings. Take a very sharp Stanley knife and remove your masking tape. Because usually you can't get to the opposite side, the reason why we use masking tape is it tears very easily and very straight. From here now, 
you bring your screen back in to make sure everything's clearing, all your tensions and stuff all look fine, all your threads look like they're in the right place. The final touch is you push the screen to your closed position, grab our handlebar from earlier, and we fit the handlebar up similar to how we fitted up the screen. Slide it up into the channel, just get a bit of a central position, put a bit of pressure on it, and a couple of good snaps. From there, you just recheck your screen, make sure your tensions and all that are correct, and your screen is running square. Here we go, one last thing is our final cover strip. We put this into the bottom channel. This helps to actually cover the mechanism, keep all the muck and stuff out of the mechanism, so it makes it easy to adjust later. This actually gets fitted underneath the threads, so the easiest way is you take a little bit of tension of the threads off to one side, put it into place, click it down, and then just slides in under the door, under the screen, and then just slowly clicks into place as you go along. Here we go, we have our completed re-threaded screen. Perfect, looks less like new.